Today we're going to be constructing a strobe rocket that's going to transition into a white-tailed whistle rocket at the end of its flight. To achieve this particular pyrotechnic effect, we're going to be using three different fuels along with our 14.4 ton portable press, tube support, super BP core burn tooling, spindle remover, and tube extender. Now to make a strobe rocket, we're going to use a whistle fuel about two-thirds of the way up the spindle, strobe fuel up to about 3 sixteenths of an inch or a quarter inch above the tip of the spindle, and then a plug of whistle fuel containing titanium above that. Now, the way a strobe rocket works, we've got whistle fuel around the bottom two-thirds of the spindle. That's actually going to send the rocket up into the air. Strobe fuel in and of itself really doesn't produce any sort of thrust whatsoever. It just gives us that visual and auditory effect that we really want. So by having the whistle fuel run about two-thirds of the way up the spindle, that's actually going to propel the rocket up into the air. While the strobe fuel is actually burning, it's really not producing any thrust at all. The rocket's just coasting. So the strobe fuel is smoldering, burning, smoldering, burning, smoldering, burning. And that's what creates that, that popping sound and those flashes of light. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that strobe fuel does burn pretty darn slow. So that's why we want to make sure we don't put more than about 3 sixteenths of an inch or a quarter inch of strobe fuel above the tip of our spindle. If we put any more than that, the rocket's going to fly up into the air, it's going to be strobing and popping, but it's going to hit apogee, start to come back down, still strobing and popping, still strobing and popping. So the big balancing act with strobe rockets is to make sure you just don't use too much strobe fuel above the spindle. Above the strobe fuel, though, we are going to go ahead and uh, compress a plug of whistle fuel containing that 10% AD mesh titanium sponge. That's going to give us a nice auditory effect, and it's also going to give us a nice white bushy tail right before the header goes off. So let's go ahead and start building our one pound strobe rocket. As with all whistle and strobe rockets, we have to use hydraulic force to actually construct our motors. There's no safe way to hand ram any of these materials. Now we're going to be pressing the 9,000 PSI on the fuel grain, which of course with our paper tubes here would cause them to rupture if they weren't supported. So we're going to put our tube inside our tube support, start loading our fuels, and we're going to be building our one pound strobe rocket. Take our tube support, loosen the knobs just a little bit, clamping bars slide off. The support splits into two halves. Put our tube in one half, slide our support together, put on our clamping bars, and again, just finger tight. They don't need to be terribly tight at all. We're going to take this entire assembly, go ahead and put it on our spindle assembly. All right, now we're ready to start loading up our motor. And now again, with a strobe motor, the first two-thirds of the spindle is going to have whistle fuel pressed around it. So basically, our first two rammers are going to be used to compress whistle fuel around the spindle. We're just using our standard benzoate whistle fuel at this time. <clears throat> Put our funnel onto our tube. Two level teaspoons of whistle fuel. Using our number one rammer, go ahead and press everything in just by hand, and then take the entire assembly and put it into our press. Now again, we want to watch that no pass line, make sure that that doesn't dip into the top of the tube. And after that first increment of fuel, you can see that our no pass line is just above the tube, so we're good to go. Go ahead and pull out our number one rammer. And we're going to go ahead and use our rammer cleaner to get that little bit of fuel that goes up inside the bore of the rammer out of there. We always want to clean that rammer out after every single increment. That's the single biggest thing that you can do to enhance the safety of building a rocket. Two more scoops of our benzoate whistle fuel. Still using our number one rammer. Why 
go ahead and press it on down. 9,000 PSI on the fuel rating right there. Using our little puller, give our rammer a twist, pull it out of the tube. And again, we're going to go ahead and clean out the inside bore of our rammer. A little brass rod that I made that does this. All right, now we're ready to load up another increment of whistle fuel. Still using that number one rammer. One more increment of whistle fuel with this number one rammer and we'll be good to go. And as we've been doing, after every single increment, let's go ahead and clean out the bore of that rammer. Okay, two more teaspoons of our whistle fuel. And this will be the last increment that we're going to use this number one rammer to press. All right, we can see that our swap out line is now above the top of our tube and our tube support. That means it's time to change to our number two rammer. Before we set this rammer aside though, let's go ahead and clean it out. Make sure it's ready for our next rocket. Okay, two scoops of fuel again. And we're still using just our plain old benzoate whistle fuel. Going to use our number two rammer, press it in by hand, blow off any of the dust that got on top there. Go ahead and press it on down. And again, that's 9,000 psi in the fuel grain. That gives us a nice solid fuel grain, no air pockets, no cracks. So that way we don't have to worry about potatoes. And as we've been doing, go ahead and clean out the bore of this rammer. And we'll get one more increment of fuel out of this one. Two more scoops of our benzoate whistle. Still using that number two rammer here. That's 9,000 PSI on the top. We can see that that swap out line is right at the top of the tube. So now it's time to transition to our number three rammer. And since we're making a strobe rocket, we're also going to change over to our strobe fuel. But let's go ahead and clean out the bore of this rammer first. So we can set aside that number two rammer, grab our strobe fuel, and again, we're gonna do, kind of do the same thing, and that's gonna be two level teaspoons of fuel. Gonna use our number three rammer, which is our shortest rammer with a core in it. Press it in by hand, just blow off any, any loose fuel that's sitting on top of the tube support, and go ahead and press it. There we go, 9,000 PSI. That's going to compress that strobe fuel into a nice solid fuel grain. Give it a twist. 
And like we've been doing, go ahead and clean out the board of this rammer. Two more scoops of stroke. Still using this number three rammer. Okay, we'll do one more increment of stroke and that ought to do as well. Clean out that rammer like we've always been doing. Two more teaspoons of strobe. Now this swap out line gives us a pretty good indication of where the strobe is in relation to the top of the spindle. You can see that we've got about 3 16 of an inch above the tube uh, where that uh, swap out line is. So we're basically 3 16 of an inch above the spindle with pressed in strobe fuel. So now we can go ahead and transition over to our solid plug of whistle fuel that's got the titanium in it. We're also going to move into our solid rammer. But first we need to clean this out. All right, now we can move over to our whistle fuel that's got titanium in it. So two level teaspoons. Using our solid rammer, press it in by hand. Now we're going to go ahead and press one more increment of whistle fuel into the tube. This will give us a nice long screech at the end of the rocket's flight before the header goes off. But the empty cavity that we've got at the top of our tube is even awfully small. So we switch over to our tube extender, set that entire assembly on top of our tube support. Two more scoops of whistle fuel with titanium. And this tube extender is actually holding that loose fuel until we stick our solid rammer and depress that loose fuel into the tube. So we take our solid rammer, just press it on through the tube extender into the support, and that's going to push all of that loose fuel into our tube. So we can go ahead and press away. All right, now we've got a completed one pound strobe rocket transitioning to a white tailed whistle rocket already. All we got to do is pull it out of the tube support. Unscrew the base from the spindle. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and loosen our tube support clamping bars. And again, this is 9,000 PSI, so they do snug up a little bit and you're going to need to use an Allen key to loosen these knobs up. But it doesn't take much. Just a revolution or two. So loosen up our knobs just a smidge. Clamping bars come right off. Insert our brass tool into the slot between the tube support halves. Pop them apart. Take our solid rammer, stick it into the top of our finished motor, and just pop it out of the tube support. Now to remove the spindle from the motor, all we need to do is take our spindle puller, stick it over the base of our motor, use the longer screw that comes with it, and screw the entire assembly back into the base. 
What this is going to do is this is just going to pull the spindle straight out of the motor. Let's give it a couple revolutions. Pops free real easy, even at 9,000 PSI on the fuel grain. And now we've got a one pound strobe rocket that's going to transition into a white tailed whistle rocket.